Good morning, everybody. Out early again. The sun's not quite up, at least above the trees. As you see at the end, I spotted a couple of deer walking down here. But by the time I got down here, they were gone, so. When there are deer this close, you have to watch for ticks. Deer are the biggest carriers. So just be safe and check yourself if you're out, if there are deer around. And that goes for home too. People tell me, well, they have deer in their backyard. Now that's cool. I have deer in my backyard too. Okay, as I'm making this video, this is on the start of Memorial Day weekend. Memorial Day is the day that we remember those that gave their life to defend our country. I'm still looking for deer, but don't see them. <clears throat> this is not a celebratory holiday like Fourth of July or even Veterans Day or some of the other days that celebrate what people have given. Now, of course, as Christians, we have Memorial Day every day because Christ died for us. But we're being specific now, and we're talking about earthly sacrifice, which won't get you into heaven, but it's still a noble thing to do. For those of us that have been in the military, we know that it can be trying at times and is always dangerous even if there's no war going on. People die in practice exercises. Okay, one last look. No more deer. Okay, I'm back to my normal spot, so I'm going to sit down. Ah. <sighs> I probably need to position this in a better area, so I think I'm going to do that. So let me switch to the ca camera tripod. Be right back. Okay, much better. Because I have my show notes and I have to be able to pull them out and read them. I think I can read these without my glasses, so we'll give it a shot. So for Memorial Day. You know, people die, I'm cockeyed, and it's going to bug me. Ugh. People die every day. It's an occurrence that we can't stop. Every one of us, with the exception of those that make the rapture, will die. And even those that are alive right now might die between now and when the rapture is, because we don't know when it is. But as a Christian, it doesn't matter. As a Christian, we're with Christ when he's down here in us. And when we die, we're with Christ in heaven. So it's okay. It doesn't matter. The rest of the world needs to get that message. But I wanted to get some numbers uh, off the computer on deaths due to war. And quite frankly, there were so many listings of war around the world that I skip like every five to come up with the numbers that I've got. I'd be reading for an hour if I listed every war on record and how many people died in each one. We can go back to you know, how many people died in biblical time. How many people died when Jerusalem was destroyed in 70 A.D. A million or more at least. That's a lot. But today our normal death toll is about 150,000 a day. Just dying from natural causes, accidents, things like that, violence. So 150,000 people a day just, you know, 
die on our planet anyway, whether there's anything major going on or not. <clears throat> so I'm just going to list some of these wars and just give you the people that have died in them. Those are the ones that we want to remember. And keep in mind that when people die in a war, 99.9% .9 of the time, it is people that were ordered to go to war and to fight by somebody who's living in a palace someplace or a big house, whether it's white or not, it doesn't matter. Somebody gives the order to send these people in. There has to be a really good reason to do that. And we fought wars that were, I won't say stupid, but we fought wars with stupid means. War is something that we should avoid at all costs. But when it's inevitable, fight to win. And we haven't always fought to win. To win. It's funny that, you know, I, like to, I always like to bring in TV or movies, but MASH. It lasted longer than the actual Korean War. The TV show lasted longer than the actual Korean War because they, they showed the tragedies of war with enough humor to dampen it down so we could watch it. If it was all war and the bad things, we wouldn't, we wouldn't watch it. We couldn't. Nobody could. And that's just the Korean War. And there have been shows about Vietnam, and there have been shows about other wars, World War I, World War II. They're big movie ticket items. You know, put John Wayne in them or someone like that. Or Tom Cruise or Tom Hanks. Other people have been in them. So let's take a look at some war death tolls. And these, whenever they uh, list the numbers, they say from this number to this number. I'm picking the high number in every case, just so you know. So you may come back and say, well, that's too high. Well, <clears throat> someone felt that it needed to be there. I'm pointing this out for emphasis. I'm not going to give high and lows on everything. I'm just picking the high number. Because probably it's, it's pretty close. The Ukraine war that's going on right now, and there are deaths every week. But as of last year, the numbers were about 300,000 died. For the most part, I'm trying to give you total deaths. These could be a combination of military and civilian. A couple of times I've got numbers that have it broken down. The Iraq War from 2013 to 2017, 200,000. The Syrian Civil War, which has been going on for many, many years, uh, I guess 2011 to present. We're looking at about 600,000 people died in these wars. You kind of get the idea that maybe some of these wars are deliberate as population controls. Sometimes it looks like that. <clears throat> the Iraq War from 2003 to 2011, 650,000 died during the war. Afghan from 2001 to 2021. It's ongoing. We can't fight in that rocky terrain and there's tunnels and caves everywhere. But that's 200,000. And that's just from some terrorists, basically. <clears throat> A lot of people. Of course, Africa's got wars all the time. 
they have uh, the first Congo war is 800,000. And because they're constantly fighting <clears throat> and they're just dictators killing off people that are opposing them or genocide to get rid of the other side of the equation. The second Congo war, five million. This stuff is still going on. <clears throat> These wars haven't stopped war. Now the Vietnam War, <clears throat> we have, the U.S. has about 60,000 in casualties. But if you look at everybody involved, <clears throat> there's probably about a million killed during the Vietnam War. I'm a Vietnam veteran. <clears throat> okay. Going back to World War II, overall deaths, all causes, two and a half million. That's from war itself. Now we know seven million, seven and a half million Jews were killed in the camps, poison, whatever, and probably another 10 million on top of that. So I don't believe that's in this number. World War One, 8.5 million, and this breaks it down, it says plus 13 million civilians. People are good at war. Now, coming in our future, we won't be here. With the fourth seal, a quarter of the, of the world population dies. We're at 8 billion. That's 2 billion. Now, whether or not that includes <clears throat> the roughly 1 billion so-called Christians, and I say that because I think that number includes all denominations, all factions, and there's some that probably will never get to heaven. And when we get to the trumpets, another third. So right there, there's roughly half of the world population, just in the seals and trumpets. We haven't had the bulls yet. Death is inevitable. <clears throat> As a Christian, we should not fear it. Jesus said he conquered death. He conquered hell. He went into hell. And to Satan's surprise, who was probably there to greet him. And they knew each other. Because Satan lives in heaven. He thought he had him. But Jesus said, I came to conquer. Not to be conquered. He emptied out paradise conquered hell, rose again, and went to sit by the Father. So we don't have to worry about death. Living can be more of a problem than dying, because living we can have earthly problems. We can be hungry, thirsty, in pain. People have mental disorders. We're seeing a lot of that today because they're not dealing with these people. They're putting them on the streets deliberately. At this point in time, I don't think the U.S. is going to be involved in any wars. <clears throat> I don't think we could fight a war. Certainly, we could not fight a sustained war. Back when they were gearing up for World War II, they had to gear up the factories. They had to convert them over to make military gear. And they put them into a fast mode to start turning these things out. They were turning out planes and tanks and trucks and everything and shipping them overseas as fast as they could. We really weren't ready. But we got pulled into it. 
the Pearl Harbor attack pulled us into World War II. They were hoping they were going to stay out of it, let Europe deal with their own stuff. They would have lost, <clears throat> and we might be speaking German today. Now, what countries did years ago, you can't judge them by that now. We're friends now with the countries that we fought with. And we're enemies with people that we were friends with. That's sad, but that tells us that we're, the world is still prone to have wars. Jesus said wars and rumors of wars. So we will have them, they will continue. And we know that there's a couple of decent wars coming up, big ones, centered around Israel. <clears throat> Psalm 83 or the Magog War. Some say that first one's already happened, but it could be just a parallel. It says the world will hate Israel you can't have that much hate without a war. Iran is still feeding their proxies. Israel has been attacking Hamas <clears throat> to try to keep them from attacking them. Hamas did fire a few rockets and they did manage to shoot, I think 95% down, I don't remember the exact number, but it's high 90s. But they haven't used their, they only shot, I think, two or three precision guided ones. But they were shot down. Because so many people, so many countries hate Israel, they probably have one of the best defense systems in the world. So much that other countries want to buy what they've got. They need to be careful with that. They don't want the enemy to get there defensive tools so they won't be able to stop the enemy. There's war coming to the region eventually. Whether we see it, I don't know. Again, we don't know when the rapture is. But when the bad stuff happens, we should be out of here. <clears throat> so a fish jump. There are fish in this river. I don't think I'd want to eat them. Not only does the water look extremely muddy and grungy, I mean, we have a blue sky this morning. The water should be reflecting blue, and it's brown. It also runs through the city of Atlanta, who notoriously has a water treatment plant that leaks. These politicians have no intention of fixing it. It would cost them too much of their budget when they can go ahead and just pay a penalty every year that's a fraction of the budget. They ought to increase that penalty tenfold every year they don't fix it because there's no incentive. People are going to cheat the system as long as they can, especially professional politicians. Now, our world is not being run by professional politicians anymore. They've given up that right to the puppeteers. So will we be involved in, a, in another war where we see more, more deaths, more people die for the country? <clears throat> the people that have already died for the country are turning over in their graves at the, what they're doing to our country. So I don't think so. I'm going to remind everybody on every video, if you get this far, you need to like this video. If you haven't, you need to like this video. You're not doing your job right. If you watch 30 seconds or a minute and turn it off, that's fine. You don't have to like it. But if you're watching this video, like it. Share it. Share it on your channel. You don't have to put anything down there. Just share it. Hit enter and, and go on about your business. If you can, and you watch these videos to the end, 
it adds to my score that YouTube looks at. And they're doing everything they can. I've had people this morning tell me that they posted a comment and YouTube immediately deleted it. So then they reworded it and it stayed. You've got to play the game like I do. I can't mention names. Now, of course, I'm not telling anybody on this earth to fight a physical battle. We don't want war. But like I said, if you have to have one, you have to. But we don't want it. <clears throat> not a physical war. We are fighting a war, but it's a spiritual one. And we have the strongest weapons in the world. Because we have the strongest God in the universe. He's the only one that can claim that. There may be other, quote, little g gods on this earth that people worship. But only our God can rule over them all. Fight the spiritual war with the proper tools. But don't get into physical wars if you don't have to. I'm a black belt in uh, Taekwondo. Um, I, almost, <clears throat> I almost got to be a black belt in Hapkido, but I, I, I missed the testing day f for it and I couldn't uh, retest and then life had a habit of getting in the way. But I was supposed to test for black belt in Hapkido. The bottom line, the very first instruction I got from a master Avoid using what you learn here. You're far better off to run from a battle than to stay and fight. One, you don't know who you're fighting until you get to see what they do. Now, again, just like war, avoid it like all costs. Avoid fighting. But if you have to, fight to win. Most of what they taught us we can't use even in practice fighting because it was very harmful. But again, avoid physical confrontation. You don't need it. Learn to run or just learn to avoid people that are confrontational. Now you see someone beating up somebody. Well, Maybe take three or four of your friends and stop it. Most people don't want to get involved in a one-on-one. -on -one. It's, not, it's not healthy. These things don't happen all the time, but they can. As long as I've had my black belt, I've really never used it. It's just, it's just like trigonometry, or algebra, or calculus. We don't use that stuff, but we learn it. It's good for the brain. It's good for the body. Martial arts was a good way to stay physically fit. And I learned a little bit of Korean. Not much. It's a hard language, along with Chinese. They're hard languages for us because they're totally different. We can learn something like Spanish. The vowel sounds are the same. But in Korean, I, I asked my Korean master one time, and he's pretty high up. He's a seventh degree. And uh, when the main Korean master, the ninth degree or tenth degree or whatever he is, comes to the United States, he stays with the one that I learned with. I asked him, how do you say I don't speak Korean? Because I, I wanted to be able to say that. You know, no hablo espanol, no sprechen si Deutsch, je ne parle pas français. Whatever it is, I could say I don't speak that because if you start trying to play with it, they're going to try to talk to you. And a paragraph and a half later, he said, that's what you say if you don't speak Korean. And I said, if I could speak that, I could speak Korean. So, but we had to take all of our commands in Korean. Jamie Puma Chucky or something, you know, whatever the, whatever the command was we had to do in Korean at that point. Things are different around the world. Differences aren't bad. They're what make us unique. Certainly nothing worth fighting for. 
Remember those that gave their lives willingly. Remember those that lost their lives unknowingly, mostly civilians. But remember those that volunteered to die for their country. Jesus volunteered. He could have stopped it, but he didn't. In the Garden of Gethsemane, he basically, Father, if you can take this cup from me, please do it. But not my will be done, your will be done. So he volunteered to do it. Pilate said, I have, the, I have your life in my hand. And Jesus said, I could call down a legion of angels. Voluntarily. That's the people that you want to basically memorialize this weekend. And pray that we never have to go in this again. Unfortunately, we know there's wars coming. Maybe not for the United States, but we might be you know, walking around with targets on our back. If somebody fears that we will not retaliate, they might sh shoot some missiles at us. We're giving away all of our ability to fight. We're sending all of our stuff to Ukraine. Okay, I got people coming in, so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. Another deer close by camp. There's not as many people in the camp right now, so the deer are getting closer and closer. There's a second deer hiding over here on the side. He's probably going to join the first one that ran across. There we go.